How's it going, everybody? And welcome back to another episode of Let's Play East Book 3, The Oath in Felgana. So last episode, I was once again getting my butt pretty handily handed to me. Level-wise, there really wasn't all that much I can do. I mean, I'm just not... I've gone up one, but I'm just not gaining the experience at the rate that I need to be in order to really be able to level up. This thing's very, game is very good at kind of getting you to where you can be experience-wise. What I have done is I've upgraded a bit. I uh, have managed to grind enough money to buy the newest, newer sword and a new suit of armor which increased my defense and attack stats. Now, my attack stat doesn't affect my magic damage, unfortunately. No, my level up will help in that regard. The um, defense, however, will increase my survivability against this boss pretty significantly. I'm not going to worry about fighting the weaker stuff here. That's just I can avoid it. Just move forward. Unfortunately, this stuff just doesn't give me, even at like a boosted rate of experience, this stuff just doesn't give me the kind of experience I need to be worth spending the time fighting when I don't need to. Now I just need to get my money and these guys tend to drop it fairly often. These guys really. Quit dodging me. Back to here. Oh yeah, my magic damage has gone up good. That'll make a difference. There's our difference maker. And yeah, all everything I've killed, I've gained less than 300 experience since I've gotten into here. Okay, let's see if we can't have a little bit of a better result here this time. Oh, I need to talk to him again. Oops. We've been through all this before. Okay, time for a little payback. Wench.
Yeah, I'm definitely taking less damage and dealing more. Oh, what's this? I don't like that. Must be because I've gotten her health down enough. Careful, I can still potentially lose this. Ow! Oh! I can't lose now! Got her! Ooh. Even with my defenses up, that was close! Some kind of talisman? Moonstar statue. See, even she didn't give me a level up. <laughs> what are you doing here? You don't listen very well. I believe we handed down a royal edict to close the quarry, did we not? If you'd just done as you were told, you wouldn't have gotten hurt. So spare me the lecture. Just do as Lord McGuire asks. You. I'd wondered what had become of you, but I'd never imagined. You aren't really working for Count McGuire, are you? Oh, but I am. I am a devoted knight in the service of Lord, Great Lord McGuire. Therefore, I'll thank you to keep a respectful tone when you address me. Who goes there? You aren't from Redmont. What business have you here? It all gave his name and explained the circumstances of his arrival in Felgana. A friend of Dogie's? <laughs> I never thought he'd come back. And certainly not now. No matter. Lord McGuire's orders were explicit regarding the closure of the quarry. If you've come to lead this old man out of here, then I suggest you do so immediately. Wait! What about Elena? Or do you even care that she's been worried sick about you? She doesn't even know if you're alive or dead. I've grown wary of playing nursemaid. She's 17. She's old enough to cope without her big brother. You should tell her to forget about me. Hell, coming from you, she might even do it. Ah, but where are my manners? It would seem I've forgotten to introduce myself. I am Chester Stoddard, a high-ranking knight in service of Felgana's lord, his grace, Count McGuire. A doll, wasn't it? As an adventurer, I know you may be tempted, but I'd advise you not to get involved in our politics. That is, of course, unless you're eager to die. Count McGuire is the Lord of Felgana. Though he's not native to this land, he's actually from Rom. From the moment he took power here, he levied exorbitantly high taxes and pressured us into forced labor. Then a few days ago, he ordered us to shut down Tigre Quarry, the town's primary source of income. Naturally, we refused, since he gave us absolutely no reason. And that's about when you showed up. To think that Chester would willingly serve a man like that. What could possibly be running through his head? He'd left his little sister behind, too, and she hasn't heard a word from him in months. Honestly, I have a hard time believing it. Even now, knowing what I know, I keep thinking it can't be true. And what am I supposed to do? Just tell Elena to try to forget him about him? I couldn't possibly agree to that. I'd never be so callous. No. 
Elena! How long have you been listening? I, I heard you made it home from the quarry. And you, you were hurt. So I... I thought... I'd stop by to check on you. And... I overheard... Your whole conversation. I... I'm sorry! Elena! It's good to know Chester's alright at least. But that's little consolation right now. Ever since they were orphaned 12 years ago, those two have really watched out for one another. Up until about three years ago, they lived at my house, and I'd always put Chester in charge whenever I was away. I figured it would teach him to be a responsible young man, though honestly, I never did get the hang of raising him. A doll, could I persuade you to look in on Alana for me? Right now, I think she might find it easier to open up to an impartial third party. Ah, so this is the mayor's house. That's why no one was there. I don't know how we would have ever managed without you, Adal. Mayor Edgar is the only thing standing between us and McGuire's oppressive tyranny. And without you, he'd be gone. The quarry's closure will hit us like a ton of bricks, but we'll manage. As long as we have Mayor Edgar, we'll survive. Been lots of bad things happening at the quarry lately. Not too long ago, one of the wooden bridges we built in there came tumbling down. One of our apprentice miners died in that one. Bob was his name. I can't even bear to think about it, or I might start crying again. As I'm sure you noticed, the quarry is basically nothing but a huge monster nest at the moment. We could deal with McGuire breathing down our necks, but the monsters pose the real threat. So as much as we hate to do it, we're actually going to shut down mining operations for however long we need to. Oh, what to do, what to do. With the quarry closed, I'll never get my hands on any ravel ore. My investors will all drop me and I'll be ruined. I don't look forward to the mountains of debt that will await me when I get back to Rom. Failure, thy name is Antonio. But wait! You're the type that people randomly send on quests, aren't you? Please, sir, sell me some ravel ore. If you could find me just enough to keep my backers from breaking my kneecaps, I'll buy it from you at top gold. What do you think? An irresistible offer, no? I swear I'll pay handsomely. You have to spend money to make money, after all. Just ten pieces. Ten pieces of ravel. Chester. A doll. I'm sorry. I've just got a lot on my mind. My brother gave me this pendant. He left it here in a letter for me on the day he vanished. I guess it makes me feel closer to him when I wear it. But... In reality, he was closer than I ever realized, all this time! I'm so sorry, Adal. So many horrible rumors have been going on around, going around about my brother. And then, to hear the man who raised me confirm them all. I just want to know what's happening and why. He must have a reason, right? Maybe I'm being selfish. I should just be grateful he's alive. In a way, it's like a weight I've been carrying for the last six months has been lifted from me. I may not know what's going through his mind just yet, but I do know that if I could talk to him, just talk to him, then things might go back to normal. So, don't worry about me. I'll be okay. But thank you for your concern and all. I really do appreciate it. So... What Father Pierre said was true. He mentioned he'd caught sight of a man who looked like my brother in front of the ruins to the northeast. That's where I was heading when you found me. I went out to see if I could catch sight of him myself. Why would he want to go to such a ghastly place, though? Well, let's see if... Ooh. This has become quite serious indeed. Why would Father Pierre go to such a place? 
Please forgive me. I should have tried harder to stop him. Have you seen Father Pierre by any chance? You haven't? Oh dear, where could he have gone? My, my, such blazing red hair. You must be a doll. I've heard murmurings about you amongst the townsfolk. My name is Nicholas. I'm head of the Felgana Diocese. I was also the town's priest until three years ago. Now I serve at the castle while Father Pierre enlightens the town. I still drop by from time to time, though. Old abbots do die hard, as they say. I fear, however, that my visit today may be a bit less transient than usual on account of Father Pierre's absence. Are you familiar with the Ilburn's ruins to the northeast of here? They are the remnants of a temple used by practitioners of a pagan religion from a long-lost era. It would seem that Father Pierre has taken it upon himself to visit that temple for purposes unknown. It's unsafe in every regard. There's a dormant volcano behind it which has recently become active anew. And popular rumors suggest the place is infested with monsters of all shapes and sizes. All the more reason for concern. One cannot help but fear the worst. Adal. Adal Kristen. They say you're the one who res rescued Mayor Edgar from the quarry. Is this true? Given your considerable skill, might I humbly request you undertake another such mission to find Father Pierre? Yeah, I'll help. With such selfless courage. On behalf of the Church, you have my deepest gratitude. I believe you will be needing this. The Ilburn's ruins are just off the road to the northeast of here. This key opens the access gate. Please, do whatever you can to ensure the safety of Father Pierre. May God be with you. Fight well, adventurer. Okay then, so we are heading to the Ilburn's ruins. Heh, <laughs> I guess I was wrong about you, mister. You really saved the mayor? Man, you must be super duper strong. He's not here right now, but Chester was super duper strong like that too. You gotta tell me sometime how you beat the monsters. Promise you'll tell me, Mr. Adal. You actually went into the mines? The scary monster infested mines? All by yourself? Just to rescue our mayor? <laughs> It's like you're some kind of mythical hero from a storybook. Your name is Adal, right? I hear you're one of those sword-wielding adventurer types who go around saving the world. Dogi certainly has good taste and best friends, it seems. He's always spouting nonsense and playing practical jokes on people. I just don't know what to do with him. The townsfolk have never liked the Count much, even from the outset. He has levied ridiculously high taxes, and even taken people from the town to help build his castle. Rumor has it he also hired a lot of mercenaries to do his bidding, knighting them on the spot as a lure. I think even most Rom Roman politicians would disapprove of his tactics. You know, I left a wife and son behind in Garmin. I wonder how they're doing these days. If you can get work as a knight, you're in for an easy ride. Life becomes like a never-ending party. My wife was dead set against the whole idea, but I did it anyway. And what do you know, she was right, as always. Thank you so much, Adal. You've done us all a great service by bringing our men back safe and sound. Is it true you took down a giant monster in there? Everyone in town's been talking about the new red-headed hero who showed up out of the blue to save the day. I can honestly say I'm proud to have you staying under my roof. Hey, doll. Good going getting everybody home safe and sound. I don't know how you did it, but you really saved the day. Though it seems we have another missing person now. Father Pierre left town a while ago and is yet to return. I need to stop letting people talk me into allowing them outside. Poor Gardener. Well, let's head to the Elburn Ruins and then we will save 
end this episode. Those poor wolves. I just as much pretty much look at them when they die now. If I remember correctly, it's this way to the lions. Yep. Choose the key. Oh, these look fun. Okay, well, with that first kill within the ruins, I think it's time to go ahead and wrap this one up. I hope you've enjoyed the episode. Please like, subscribe, favorite, throw any feedback you may have in the comments below. And next time, we would return to Felgana with... We will investigate further into the Yilburn's ruins. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on another new episode of Let's Play East Book 3, The Oath in Felgana. Farewell. <laughs>